You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. This video, we will be tackling Bo Peep from Toy Story. I remember that she was the only one I really cared about um, when I was watching Toy Story 1 and 2. She was so beautiful, and of course, as a little gay boy, her dress was everything. It really made me sad that she wasn't in the third one. I just needed a strong female character to look up to. And thank goodness Barbie was there to fill in the gap. By the way, speaking of Barbie, did you guys know that Bo Peep was never supposed to be Woody's love interest? In the first movie, they wanted Barbie to be Woody's love interest. But of course, Mattel didn't know what the heck this story was going to be about, they didn't know what the movie is about really, and they did not want to give the rights to Pixar. Until of course, they saw how successful the first movie went, which boosted toy sales. And Barbie started to appear in 2, 3, and mm, mm, I guess 4. Well, Bo Peep is making her comeback, and that fragile porcelain lamp is no more. My main goal is to give her the same beauty she has in the film and make it come to life. So let's go ahead and get it started. So I chose to customize the Epic Moves Bo Peep doll because she has a semi-made-to-move body from Mattel, and I do prefer a lot of possibility. One thing that really makes this inaccurate is her rooted hair, and yeah, the face up. She looks like Toy Story 1 Bo Peep. So first let me remove all of her hair. After that we can take our acetone or nail polish remover and remove her factory paint. And by the way, I do have all of my materials and tutorial on my website, Hexton.com. That is Hexton.com. When our canvas is all clean and ready, I take my epoxy sculpt and give her molded hair. I do really want to make this as close to the movie as much as possible, and that does require the molded porcelain hair. I first start by covering her entire scalp, then I add the details like her bangs and curls. When I apply epoxy to the face, I try not to remove her head from the body because it might disrupt the epoxy and crack in the end, even if it's completely cured. Actually, especially if it's completely cured. So as much as possible, try not to do it. After a day, the clay should be completely cured and ready for some pigments, but let's start with her face first. Of course, this has been prepped and primed with Mr. Super Clear. I sprayed it two times to make the pencils more pigmented. As always, I start by sketching the face first to draw out where things need to be before adding the details. I'm sure you can already tell that this is a far departure from my usual style of face-up, for I really want her to look movie accurate. My goal was to make her look like a porcelain Disney exclusive doll, which I'm surprised they didn't make one. Um, I think they only made the one that talks, from what I know. Bo's face really had a drastic change from Toy Story 1 and 2, and it's crazy how far 3D animation has taken us. Personality-wise, I don't think that it's a drastic change because she's always been a leader like Woody. Like, Woody is the leader of Andy's toys, and she's the leader of Molly's toys. So I wanted to give her a smirk look like the promotional photos since it really gives her so much character.
I know her catch light is supposed to be on her right, but it works better having it placed on the left. And now we can start coloring her hair. I'm actually really happy with how the hair turned out. Um, I made the curls a little longer than usual so it shows better from the side. This was four layers of yellow acrylic paint and I did spray it with Mr. Super Clear so we can give it some shadows with chalk pastels. I mixed some deep oranges and browns to give her hair more depth. I also used it to give her curls some details. For her bangs, I used pencils and paint for that graphic detail. After all of that, make sure that she is completely set with Mr. Super Clear because we are going to glaze her up. If there are areas left unset with Mr. Super Clear, it could bleed out and ruin the entire face. So make sure that every single area is coated and set with Mr. Super Clear. I'm just using the Liquitex Gloss Varnish to give the shiny porcelain look. And I did this on her entire body. Well, those that will not be covered anyway. And now we are done with Bo's face and I'm so thrilled with how she turned out. I feel like the before and after is quite drastic in comparison. So yeah, it's finally revealed. I have to be honest. For those who are wondering why Bo Peep looks so different from Toy Story 1 and 2, it's because I repainted her. It was me. It was all me. I was responsible for it. <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? But, you know, if the shoe fits. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on down. So because her legs is basically a curvy made to move Barbie, I wanted to see if Barbie heels would fit her, of course. But they don't. I think they gave her bigger feet so she would hold poses better and stand on her own, but I really wanted to give her heels instead of the flats. So I decided to take off her feet and replace it with the Barbie feet. While I do love her Mary Jane flats, you guys know me. I love me some stiletto heels even more. I'm sure even if she was running around and doing some toy rescues, she could do it in some killer heels. Let's not forget to gloss up her legs. The bow that came with the Epic Moves doll is made out of plastic completely and it doesn't have the grow grain ribbon that Bo Peep had, like the details. So I went to my local fabric store and I got some actual grow grain ribbon and I'll just recreate it. There was no pink um, that matches her well so I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. Then I just glued it on some painted warbler for a well-fitted headband. For her blue look, or as I like to call her, the Galavanter look, which actually came with the doll and has a really nice quality to it, however it is missing a few details, I decided to brush that off and I just wanted to add the piping detail on her front panel to highlight that area a little more. The skirt cape that came with this doll was a miss for me since the fabric they used was really stiff and it didn't really sit well as a cape or a skirt. So I'm gonna make a separate skirt and cape to go along her. Yeah, so please um, brace yourselves for I have taken out my sewing kit and I am with needle. Um, you know how that goes. I'm using this lacquer fabric which imitates the sheen of silk and I'll be making the polka dot pattern with a round sponge and fabric paint. 
Surprisingly, it actually dried fairly quick, so now I'm going to go ahead and hem the bottom for a cleaner look. Then I'm taking this lace ribbon I folded in half to add to the hemline of the skirt. Then I just gather the waist with a straight stitch and I'm living for how big the skirt turned out. I wanted to add some more flair to the back, so I decided to add a pink bow for bow. <laughs> oh my god. Now let's make the cape. I have this blue satin that drapes well, well enough, and I'm just combining it with the white lycra. To create a flatter hem, I'm using this craft iron to heat up the hemlines. And be careful if you have one of these, they are so hot, like Hades hot. Again, I take my textile expertise and create the polka dot pattern. Then I'm taking the lace ribbon again to add onto the hem. I just gather the cape leaving half an inch for the sides and I steal the button from the stiff cape and I stitched it onto this one. So the cape actually does fit her waist, so technically this can still be a skirt, but it's not dramatic enough for my taste. Speaking of drama, I wanted that skirt I made to be filled with volume like how Bo Peep's skirt was in Toy Story 1 and 2. She was like literally a cake topper, like a walking cake topper. I'm making a crinoline with everyone's favorite word. Warbler. Well, it's my favorite word. The Pokemon sounding material that I have been using for a while. It's like my favorite material. I just cut multiple strips and heated the ends to piece them together to create a circle. And I think I made four circles in total that goes down in sizes. Then I just connect them with white cords. To prevent harsh lines and so that it blends a little better, I glued some frill tape to the crinoline. And now our skirt will be big and puffy. Now this is the top that came with the doll and it's supposed to look like her original costume when combined with the cape skirt. Um, yeah, it's not good. For some reason, the quality isn't the same as the blue jumpsuit. So I decided to order the Thinkway Bo Peep doll that came with the full shepherdess dress and also Billy, Goat, and Gruff. Now, that doll is overall bigger than the Epic Moves Bo Peep doll, so I knew I had to make some adjustments. As you can see, it is highly detailed with the panel and lacing, and also the lace peplum is polka dotted, which is very accurate. So I'm chopping off an inch from her skirt, which you can already see that I already hemmed, so I'm literally just chopping off the extra, and I will be stitching the lace back.
I also resized the bodice to fit her really well. For her staff, I'm just adding some cords to it to look a bit more accurate. So I mainly got the Thinkway toys for her dress and also, of course, the sheep. They are so cute in the movie and I'm glad we now know that they have names. Unfortunately, these girls aren't as lively and vibrant as the movie, so I'm gonna be giving back some color to them. At first, I went for a pink color thinking it would oxidize lighter, but it was literally pink, so I changed it to this cream color. I painted their faces, ears, and legs. Then, I sprayed the entire sheep with Mr. Super Clear so we can add more details with pastels. The key to this design was a lot of subtle gradients and that could easily be done with chalk pastels. I wanted to give their wool some depth since the sheep is sculpted really well. As you can see, these are sculpted in lines. So yeah, I just wanted to highlight that. Just so you guys know, for your information, if you're planning to order this, this is literally rubber. The sheep is literally made out of rubber, like a rubber ducky. Like you can squish it if you want. Of course, I will try not to because we've said it with Mr. Super Clear and we're going to be adding the, the glaze. So, you know, now it's it's good. It's fragile. It's porcelain. They're fragile. Um, but price point wise, I don't think it's worth it. I think it was set to be 100 from Target, um, which I don't think is worth it. And it's definitely not worth what I ordered her for, which was 200 from eBay. Um, but I really wanted them, and I know Bo Peep would be so lonely without her sheep. Again, I glazed the entire sheep with Liquitex to give the porcelain look. And now let's check things off and make sure we have everything. We have the Gallivanter suit that came with the doll, the bow, cape, skirt, crinoline that I made, the dress and bonnet from Thinkway Toys set, and staff and also the pink pumps. I think we are ready and we are all done, so let's go ahead and dress her up for her next adventure.
Okay, I keep telling you, you can't rush art. <gasps> Girls, in position. Christian's coming. And remember, she's for display only. You handle her too much, she's not gonna last. 